Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Today I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to do some quite advanced image manipulation and produce an image looking like this one I've got here. Now if you've seen the film Pan's Labyrinth you should recognise this immediately. This is a picture of me but um, obviously I'm trying to recreate an effect that's used spectacularly in that film. Um, and it's very very simple. You can do it all just using a basic digital camera and the GIMP, you need nothing else and a little bit of time and this tutorial but other than that it's easy so what you're going to need first um, I'll just close this image because this is um, just one of my finished images you're going to need two pictures you're going to need a picture of yourself assuming this kind of position with your hands over your eyes and you're going to need another picture of yourself preferably taken on a tripod or a stable surface um, but with your eyes wide open um, and I'm trying to recreate the same sort of posture and things but it really doesn't matter because we're only taking the eyes from this so what we need to do first we're going to need to select both of these eyes so we can use them later in the second half of the image so I'm just going to nothing fancy just use the rectangle select tool and I'm going to take about that much of the eye I want quite a bit of overlap and I'll explain why in a minute and I'm just going to right click edit and press copy now you can see I could also have just press control C um, I'm going to then move over to the other image and I'm just going to paste this one in I'm just going to press control V for that to speed things up and I'm just going to make that a new layer and then move it out of the way it's going to go over here somewhere and then if I just quickly head back to that other image and I'm just going to select the other eye nice and quickly nothing fancy and again just control C to copy it tab over to the other image and there you go and make that a new layer and move over I'm sorry I'm rushing through this bit but this is boring but okay so obviously that's the very basic of what we've done so far um, and that's everything that we need in there um, now the next thing we need to do is just blend it in uh, now the blending I'm going to do for this is actually very very simple um, and it's really not going to take that long at all um, so all I need to do really is use my eraser now the important thing I don't just want to rub out these bits because that will look a little bit rubbish but if I set the opacity of my eraser down to about 20% oh, that doesn't have to be perfect then all I'm going to do, and if I just zoom in on this image first, I'll show you what effect this will have. When I start to delete, uh, erase this image, you'll notice that it doesn't actually erase it very much at all. You'll see that it does make a slight difference, but not much. I have to keep re-clicking it and re-erasing it again and again and again. Now that may seem like it's a bit of a pain, but if I show you the alternative, that doesn't really look that good. We're losing a lot of detail that I do want to keep. So I'm just going to control Z that and get rid of that. So I would recommend setting your opacity down quite low. So you, you could set it a little higher, but if you have it quite low, then um, 20.6 is my favourite for this. I'm just going to very simply keep erasing these little bits. Now I don't want to go right up to the eyeball, I want to keep some of the eye. But if you see, I'm just going to very simply erase around it. Now it's important that because we've used a rectangular thing and I didn't um, have a soft edge on it at all, it was a hard edge, you need to make sure that you do erase all of the actual edge that you've got there so that that isn't obvious anymore if you see there we've still got that corner quite obvious so I'm just going to quickly do this on one eye once I've done it on one eye I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to see me do it to the other eye as well just to speed things up and it really is this simple I mean you can already see that the effect is quite good and something I particularly like about this the folds and creases in my hand and the kind of crease that I've got around my eye in this bit 
all seems to kind of blend quite naturally and get together. I mean, you can align it yourself a little bit more. But I think that's that's pretty much it. That's all we're going to need to do for this eyeball. Um, well, there's just a little bit of an edge there. I'm just going to quickly get rid of that. Just make sure the top's fine. Perfect. Now, I'm just going to move that eyeball just a bit, just so I can really make the most of... See, what I'm trying to do, there's a slight S effect, and it's going from the crease of my hand, and it's actually the crease of my eye, and it looks quite natural. And playing on those kind of natural creases um, really kind of helps pull this effect together. Anyway, I hope that's quite straightforward. I'm going to pause the video now so you don't have to see me do this eye, and then we'll continue with the tutorial. Okay, and we're back, and you can see I've blended this one um, in quite nicely as well. Uh, I'm just going to check that they're aligned. Um, they are pretty much spot on. I don't think I have to do too much to that, so that'll be fine. Um, once I've done that, I'm just going to zoom out again so we can see what we've got so far. Okay, that's looking much better already. Now, unfortunately, because this was taken on my terrible uh, digital camera that I've explained my problems with that before, um, I'm going to play around with some colour adjustment. And again, I'm going to use the Curves tool, but I'm going to do something slightly different with it and something I haven't shown you before. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn this image into um, one flat image. At the moment I'm still working on three layers. Um, the quick way of doing that is just going to be to use another keyboard shortcut. I'm going to press Control and M and that will merge all of the layers and make sure you've got, it doesn't really make much difference, but make sure you've got Expand as Necessary checked and just press Merge and you can see I've now got one layer. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is open up my curves. So we go to right click, colors, and curves. Now, if you were doing this on Photoshop, you'd have the opportunity to do this in lab color mode, um, which is much, much more powerful and you get a nicer effect out of it. Unfortunately, we're working with GIMP, and this is one of the few things that I would suggest GIMP is not brilliant for, and it is this idea of not having lab color. So we're going to be just working with RGB, uh, red, green, and blue, it's fine for our purposes though, so we'll soldier on. All we're going to do, um, and this is something you would do on Photoshop with lab colour as well, I'm just going to bring in, you'll notice first I selected the red channel, and I'm just bringing in um, the red point, as it would be instead of a white point here, and the black point, just in about this much. I mean, there's no exact science to this. Um, the green channel, I'll bring in to the same oh, to the same degree to begin with. We might need to play around with this a little. And I'm going to do the same for the blue channel. And you'll see that it's beginning to give us just something that's a little bit more horror. It's brought out some of the colour, um, but the red's dominating at the moment. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that red out because it's just a little bit too red for me. And we'll just turn that up so we darken that red out. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, and the final thing I'm going to do is go to our value one, which is just for basic contrast. And I'm just going to give it an ever so slight, what would be the best effect for this? We'll maybe try and we'll lighten it up a little bit as well. Yeah, that's got a nice kind of horror effect to it. Um, and if I just show you the before and after, um, boring, uncorrected, quite cool gothic. So I'm just going to press OK. Um, two more things to do. Um, I'm just going to add an unsharp mask. Um, which is just one of the filters. Um, so I'm just going to right click it, go to filters, enhance, unsharp mask. Um, the settings I usually like to use, you want to keep your unsharp mask quite low. Um, so I really don't mess around with these too much from these settings. So if you have your radius set to 5, your amount to 0.5, sometimes 0.7, your threshold to 0, sometimes 1. Um, you're never really going to go far wrong with it. And I'm just going to press OK to see what the effect is. Uh, just waiting for it to load up down the bottom. 
and all that does is just sharpen it up a little bit so if I just control Z it so you can see the difference and it really isn't much of a difference so here we have quite a soft focus as such and um, if I just redo that this will just sharpen it out bring some of the lines out a little bit more just so it looks just that little bit more interesting and eye catching a picture uh, now the final thing I'm going to do is just crop it just so I've just got that square image and to crop it we've just got a little scalpel tool select the area we want and then we can adjust the bars like this click in the centre and the job's done <coughs> very very quick and within the space of one of my tutorials which is amazing really that I've got this done in 10 minutes um, and it's as easy as that I really hope you have fun with this effect um, and thanks for watching goodbye